Howdy everyone, and today I'm going to get stuck right into reviewing the living daylight out of this new offering from the Irix lens company, the Irix 30mm f1.4 Dragonfly. It's a manual focus lens for digital SLR cameras, coming in Canon EF, Nikon F and Pentax K flavours. It costs 675 US dollars, or about 680 pounds in the UK, so it's priced as being a premium lens, although other such lenses often cost even more. I'd like to thank Irix for loaning me this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, as you all know by now, this is a totally independent review. I've tested a truly ridiculous amount of camera lenses by now, but I believe this is the first full-frame 30mm model I've ever come across, and on a full-frame camera that is a useful angle of view. It'll get you a fairly wide-angle picture, without any kind of stretching in the corners, and with just a small emphasis on your subject. It's a focal length that isn't wide enough to really add much excitement to your image, it gives you a fairly neutral looking picture, where your subject does all the talking. The maximum aperture of f1.4 is fantastic though, offering you nicely out of focus backgrounds for such a wide angle lens, not to mention aiding in shooting in darker situations. The lens itself certainly has a bold design aesthetic as you can see, with a kind of space age design to it. The next thing you notice is how gigantic it is as well, not to mention heavy, weighing 860 grams or a little under 2 pounds. It reminds me of the Sigma art lenses that were being released a few years ago that just seemed to get progressively bigger and bigger. The lens is dust and splash resistant, with plenty of weather sealing on the inside and a large weather sealing gasket around the lens mount. The lens's aperture is controlled by your camera, but as I mentioned, it's a manual focus only lens, and its only real control point is that giant rubberized focus ring. On my copy of the lens, it was a little stiff, and didn't work terribly smoothly. Some good news though, is that the lens exhibits very little in the way of focus breathing, as you can see here. At the top of the lens, there's a control ring that lets you lock the focus ring in place, which could occasionally be useful for certain kinds of photography. The lens does not have its own image stabilisation, and its filter size is a very large 86mm, so filters will be expensive for you. It does come with a nice deep hood though, and a good quality hard case for protection. Overall, this is one big, tough and pretty simple lens. It works fine, although I do wish the focus ring turned just a little more smoothly. Alright, let's look at image quality now. I'm testing it on my Canon EOS R5 with its 45 megapixel full frame sensor. In camera corrections were not available with this lens and so are turned off. At f1.4, the lens is impressively sharp in the middle, with good contrast and no purple fringing, although it's just a knife's edge away from being razor sharp. Let's look in the corners. They are really dark at f1.4, but thankfully we do still see some excellent sharpness here with no visible colour fringing. Stop down to f2, and the corners look brighter but just as sharp. Back in the middle, we see a tiny boost to contrast and resolution and the picture quality now looks perfect. Here's f2.8 in the middle, and the corners look brighter and punchier now. At f4, the corner image quality sees just another tiny little boost in sharpness looking brilliant. The image stays this sharp down to f11. However, f16 starts to look a bit softer, of course due to the effect of diffraction. Overall, it's a pretty fantastic performance for this Irex lens, it offers great sharpness across the image frame straight from f1.4, and you only need to stop down to f2 for some of the most striking image quality available today. This image quality actually reminds me very strongly of the two expensive Zeiss Otis lenses which I've tested in the past, which performed almost exactly the same here in terms of sharpness. Alright, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. The lens projects only a very small amount of barrel distortion here, you will typically never notice it in your images. As we've already seen though, at f1.4 the image corners are very dark indeed. They progressively brighten up from f2, f2.8 and f4, so you'll want to correct that vignetting with whatever editing software you're using, unless you want to keep it in just for effect. The lens's minimum focus distance is a little under 34cm, that's about average for a wide angle lens. 
At f1.4, close-up image quality remains pretty sharp, but we see a lot more purple fringing. Stop down to f2, and that fringing goes away, and at f2.8, sharpness gets a little extra boost as well. Now let's see how the lens performs against bright lights. It's just an average performance here, perhaps exacerbated by the lens's gigantic glass element. We are exposed to quite clear flaring and glaring when bright lights are in or near the image frame, but also I've certainly seen a lot worse than this before. While we're working in the dark, let's take a quick look at coma levels. At f1.4, only a very small amount of coma smearing can be seen on bright points of light in the image corners. Stop down to f2 and it's still there, but at f2.8, it's completely gone. When it comes to the quality of this lens's bokeh, in all my tests, its outer focus backgrounds looked nice and smooth in virtually all scenarios I presented it with. I've seen slightly smoother bokeh than this before, but not by much. And finally, related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration, so let's take a look. At f1.4, it's quite strong, as you can see here. At f2, those colours are reduced a little, but stopped down to see them go away completely. Overall, well, in tasking their designers to make an ultra-high quality digital SLR lens with no apparent limitation on physical size, Irix seem to be replicating Sigma's marketing strategy from about four years ago. Sigma has since gone on to start reducing the size of their lenses and focusing on the mirrorless market. It remains to be seen if there's enough demand in the world of premium digital SLR lenses for Irix to pick up where Sigma have left off. But anyway, this isn't a lecture on marketing strategies. The lens itself is one that doesn't handle all that nicely in use. It's bulky and its focus ring is slightly on the stiff side. But if you do work with it, it'll reward your efforts with excellent images. I previously compared this lens's image quality to that of Zeiss's hideously expensive $4,000 Otis lenses. And actually, I'd say it really is almost that good, even if I cause a few Zeiss fanboy meltdowns in saying so. The fact is that the excellent image quality is certainly there, but for a much lower price. So, if you are happy to handle this manual focus 30mm monster, then its images will make it worth your while, put a smile on your face, and so the lens comes recommended. Something else I can think of that doesn't cost as much as a $4,000 Zeiss Otis lens is supporting this channel on Patreon. I love making these lens reviews. They are time consuming and a little bit costly as well though. So if you'd like to support the channel and keep them trucking on, then take a look in the description below and supporters on Patreon get all kinds of extra bonus content and the odd exclusive video here and there. Ciao for now.